Cool, yeah, welcome to the channel. Um, today we're gonna be talking about the vermicompost bins with red wigglers, and then the bin that I videotaped uh, the other day that we just set up, or actually yesterday, and, and then we'll go into my uh, older one that's been about a month old, but was established with some local worms that are all red wigglers. And that's gonna be an outdoor bin. But I wanted to uh, show you the progress since the one I did yesterday. So this is the bin we set up yesterday with from uh, Uncle Jim's Worm Farm. And so when you get worms from them, they have usually like three different species, not just red wigglers. That's why they call it like a red worm mix. And that's because they raise them outdoors and natural worms will come up into the compost. And so you get a little bit of everything. Some of them are, will work indoors, but ideally red wigglers only are best for an indoor, like in your kitchen uh, kind of compost because they don't need to dig down. They stay kind of up on the surface and they eat everything a lot faster than other types of worms. And so I decided to do the exact opposite. I ordered some from uh, Uncle Jim's worm farm that has a mixture and I'm gonna do indoor only and see which species survive, how well it does, and which ones come out uh, dominating, just for fun. So yeah, as you saw, and you, you'll see in the other video uh, that I filmed earlier, no worms are trying to climb out. And as long as you set up your bin properly, you won't have that problem. I never use a lid, um, and I just keep it a little bit dry. So here's that shredded paper that I showed on top. That keeps the light out, and so what you can see, Right when we pull it back, you can already see the worms right here. So they're staying right at the top, but they don't like the dry and they like the dark. And so that's why I always put shredded paper on top. So you see that? Yeah. How many worms are just right there? Yeah, yep. So I'm gonna, I've got some more of this shredded paper from a paper shredder. Shredded old useless water bills since we're off the grid. Don't need those. Come on. Mmm. Preach. Um, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I'm gonna pull off some of this just to show you guys. Normally I just leave it alone, but, um, and then also you'll see, I put this cardboard in there. And the reason you put cardboard in as well is the worms when they lay eggs, um, they're sticky and they like to rub against the cardboard to get the egg sack to stick to the cardboard. Um, or other people use burlap sack material, stuff like that. But cardboard's just as easy. And you, this is clean cardboard. I just put it all together yesterday, so I wasn't expecting anything on, in this bin. But yeah, they're doing great. So here I'm at the at the soil level, and yeah, there's just worms everywhere in it. They seem pretty happy. They're hydrated. Uh, when I got them yesterday, they were super dried out and hardly moving, and they're just going crazy. They've already moved. They've already been moving the leaves around, and they're all over the leaves. So they're they're loving it. They're doing great. I'm gonna go a little bit deeper because we had soil and then paper at the bottom and leaves. So I'm gonna dig up some of these leaves at the bottom and see if they've gone down. So as you can see the leaf layer, there's no worms at all. So they're staying up in that damp soil and with the greens, which is exactly where I wanted them. That way there's dry paper and leaves below that are uh, absorbing any excess moisture so that they don't try to leave the bin then I had a moist layer of uh, the dirt and the fresh greens and stuff like that and the worms are staying exactly where I want them and then again I had this paper on top to keep them from climbing out and it's working perfect so far so 24 hours later the bins exactly like I wanted it no one's escaping and so that's a uh, great progress for a start on uh, a new worm bin for indoors so secondly, uh, what today's video is about is an established compost bin. So this is gonna be outdoor. Uh, and in future videos, we're gonna do like a 100 foot long, couple feet deep uh, row where the worms move and migrate to the food. And then as they migrate, uh, the eggs will hatch, grow up, and the babies will move as well. So then after so many weeks, hey Hank, so after after about three or four weeks all the eggs and the babies will migrate over to the food and then we can harvest the castings outdoors 
and it'll that way with the rain and everything it'll be a mulch bed below it so the rain goes right through and you don't have a problem with that and so that's where these guys are going to end up so this is about a month into this i just put newspaper on top to keep it dark and then again paper but at this point this is actually getting pretty damp you can feel how damp it is on the bottom versus the top so it's dry on the top and damp on the bottom just within about an inch and a half and that's enough to keep the worms from escaping and so I'm gonna just put this in here but now since it's a month in the little cardboard that I put right on top of the dirt so we've got I put the cardboard layer right here on top of the dirt after a couple weeks and you can see all those little tiny white dots here are little egg sacs and so they're laying all their little egg sacs on the cardboard which is exactly what we want them to do and each one of those egg sacs can have up to 100 worms yeah yeah so 100 egg sacs oh yes uh, yeah you saw yeah so see all the little tiny white dots those are the little egg sacs and so again i'm just going to take this paper off which we'll put back on and I actually want the like they even came up into the paper to get to the cardboard to lay eggs so i'm going to put those back in there and then i always like to go to the local dollar tree dollar store and this tells me it's about 75 degrees and it's been in an area that is about more so like 50 to 60 and so they usually run about 15 degrees hot sometimes like if i'm just lazy and leave them and i haven't fed them in a while i'll notice the temperature will go from like 80 to 60 because i haven't put anything compostable in there wow. <laughs> and so when they stop eating and they stop their metabolism slows down the bin temperature will drop and i'm like oh i forgot to feed them <laughs> for a while they're probably pretty hungry so it helps with that but you also don't want it above 100 and so that that's beneficial and they're like a buck for one of these all right, so now we're down to, yeah, see, I just fed them a little bit. But here's more of the cardboard with the worm eggs. And so now we're just going to dig in here. They've been composting. I have put some greens in there, which they're eating. And they're just kind of everywhere. And this is just almost all castings at this point. So it's been about a month. And this was all leaves. When I started this bin, I didn't really put any dirt in it it was just leaves and so it's I'll just go all the way to the bottom it's all just castings wow. That's amazing. there's no like dry I started with the entire thing full of just brown leaves yeah and they're doing great and so all of this is the established one with all the eggs hmm. So, how many worms would you say are in, in there? Or is it kind of hard to tell? So, yeah, so this, the one I did yesterday, I ordered two pounds, which is roughly 2,000 worms from uh, Jim's Worm Farm. This one I started with probably 500 to 1,000, yeah. uh, a lot less, but they were established. Like I said, the guy that I got them from is a, a local friend of mine, and he had, I mean, he had probably a uh, thousand square foot area in his basement that he was doing just all worm bins or yeah very large ones so that's why they laid eggs so quickly and just got so well established so what I did I got this bag again also at the dollar store for a buck and I took a bunch of the potting soil and the plants that didn't make it from our uh, greenhouse here and since it's full of roots and dead plants and everything it just made the perfect uh, soil for the bottom so I've got I'd say about five ten gallons of that and so that's gonna be the base and then I'm just gonna dump all of these guys in here and uh, that's gonna be the layer and they've still got some stuff to eat and then there's some stuff to eat down in here like I said the roots and and dead plant so like this is established they're comfortable uh, the moisture is perfect in it actually throughout the entire bin um, there's no drains on any of these at all uh, because I'm not adding any moisture 
that I don't want in there. And this is going to be indoors as well for probably two or three more weeks. It's getting down to about 40 degrees outside. It was completely iced over a couple days ago, so I'm not quite ready to start the outdoor bin now. So I'm getting them from a 5 to 20 gallons and have them be in here for a couple weeks. And then this will end up outdoors seeding our long run that we're going to do all summer. And so there will be multiple episodes to come for that. So give us a follow. If you have questions, ask. Oh yeah. Or if you're an expert and you know something that we don't. Yeah, like prove that, me wrong. That's, that's another thing is that we're, we're here to learn. Uh, we want to pull from experts and we're, we're doing what we know um, and we're really desiring to build a community with, with experts and with uh, and as well as people that are wanting to just ask questions. Uh, we really want to build a community around not just worms, but everything that is sustainable living, which we're going to be doing a lot in our in our videos. Um, so this is just kind of the beginning, guys. So uh, it's, it's only going to get bigger and better and more beautiful here. And so, so now we're going to do the super scientific part. Do you want to hold this open? Yeah, yeah. I'll be your little bar. Done. Oh my god. <laughs> Look at all these worms. I, I got it. Okay. We, we gotta, you gotta see this a little closer. Alright. So yeah, this was all leaves. And so they're, they're all wrapping around. Oh, there's a banana peel. Oh man. And some yeah. paper. Oh my god. And so at this point, what paper was on top, I don't care if it gets mixed in here. Mm -hmm. um, the greens, I'm still gonna probably just put them to the side as much as I can. And that's stuff I put in a couple days ago. And then again, the paper's fine. I'll put that over here too. But yeah, I mean, the worms have are way bigger than the Uncle Jim's. And these are all red wigglers in here. We'll just... Uh, now, one difference, this one does have mites. So, I don't know if you guys can see super close, but like there's little tiny mites that hate sunlight, but they're just moving around in there. And they kind of look like a tiny little gnat. Um, a lot of people freak out about that. There, It really isn't a problem, especially if you're gonna do outdoors, but even indoors. Like you can see, uh, if Ben gets up close to this, this is the bin they're in. They never came up or out. They stay down in there just like the worms do. All they like, yeah, all they like is the composting material. And they compost as well. And so the mites, Usually, as long as, um, well, the worms will self-regulate how many worms are in a bin. They'll stop laying eggs if they feel overcrowded. And they'll lay eggs a little slower with mites in there, just because the compost. But other than that, the mites make perfect compost as well. So it's not a problem. I've never had an issue with it indoors or outdoors. I just let them be. Now this bin, I am going to try to keep mite free, which is why I started the video with that and I'm not going to touch it until I wash my hands. Um, just as an experiment, there might, might end up, might be in there later, but we'll, we'll find out. Either way, it doesn't bother me, but uh, just for experiment's sake, we're gonna keep these two separate. This will stay in my kitchen. Uh, this one, like I said, is gonna stay in the greenhouse until we put it outdoors. So, yeah, so I got all of this soil, soil at the bottom, and then we've got the old bin right here at the top. No real science behind it, just dumping it in there. Uh, here's some more of this cardboard packaging. I'll probably just throw in here because I have it lying around. <laughs> and then they can lay, a, this is what they like to lay their eggs on. And so I'm just gonna throw this kind of on the top here. And then, so yeah, just some of that. And I'll probably, I always add some more cardboard every now and then. Then on top of this, just like before, we're going to add some of the shredded paper from the paper shredder, which will stop the light. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so we put this cardboard down for the worms to lay their eggs on. And then here we've got the paper shredder. Then, and so we're just going to put this on top. Oh, did I go wrong, Ben? <laughs> <laughs> Fail. <laughs> That's why we're going to have a video for that. Okay, so there's going to be mites in there now. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, good enough. 
Just as easy as that. <laughs> so, forget that. We're going to add some of the newspaper shred to the top of this to keep the light out. <laughs> really what this whole video is about is, is us taking three, three five gallons of milk. Uh, gallon. All right. <laughs> Okay, so I want to make sure this cardboard is down low because it has eggs on it. So I want it underneath the newspaper and the shredded paper here. And this bin, again, that's good. We're going to put some on top of that. Perfect. You get some mics. You get some mics. <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually left a bunch of those in here because they're going to go outdoors anyways. So that'll be good. So yeah, now we've got our established bin set up and ready to go. Though we'll have probably a few weeks and then we'll make a video about moving them outside and starting a horizontal composting bin. And then this will be the indoor one and we'll have follow videos about that and see how they're doing. The only other thing I can think of is the reason we're doing this is so that they don't slow down the egg production. It's the same amount of worms, more dirt, that just gives them more area to spread out and that keeps them not feeling contained. And so they'll continue to lay eggs. That way in two or three weeks, we'll have baby, a lot more baby worms in here to go outdoors when they have free reign to just go wherever they want. So we'll find out. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be fun. We're gonna be doing probably a video on being able to do a like under your sink compost scene where it doesn't sneak. And we're, we're, again, we're here to learn and uh, just bring up ideas. And, yeah. Cool. Yeah, and if you guys have any other uh, things you'd like us to test out with them, I'm always open to new suggestions about uh, experimental things to try with them. So yeah, just hit us up. And then this guy is going to go in this bin since it's going to be in the greenhouse. Sometimes they can get 120 in here. And so we're going to just keep an eye on that. Yes. That's that. Thanks so. for tuning in. Uh, give us a like, give us a follow to see the next videos we make here in a couple weeks. With three guys off grid. Cool. Peace. <laughs>